Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing today our look at baptism found in Lesson 10 of your class workbooks, the New Life in Christ books. We are once again on page 37, so we want to make sure that you have that out and you are uh, taking notes and following along. Today we are going to answer the question, what is baptism? It's one of the sacraments. You remember the definition that we use for sacraments? That definition is something that was instituted by Jesus, has an earthly element that's connected with God's Word, and that it offers or creates the faith which has the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. So, there are two sacraments. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. So today we're working with baptism. So we need to find out what baptism is. So we look at the word baptism as it is used in Scripture. So we start with Ephesians chapter 5. Here, Paul is comparing the relationship between husbands and wives with the relationship between Jesus and the church. So, he says, Husbands... Love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. So you might think, what word in there is talking about baptism? Where do we find baptism in there? Well, the word that's used for baptism here is washing. Baptism is is used outside of religious writings just to mean cleaning up, washing your hands. Uh, it's used for a lot of things. It's like used for washing the floor or washing the walls or washing furniture or washing your hands. So it, it's an interesting word because it doesn't have any really specific meaning other than it means to apply water. So baptism means that we apply water in any form, any manner, um, and when we, we call it Christian baptism, we refer to it as Christian baptism because Jesus says you take water and you apply it in a very special way. And that special way is in Matthew 28 verse 19. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when we define baptism, as scripture does, Christian baptism means to apply water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That makes a valid baptism. That makes a baptism that is acceptable to God. If there is water applied in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter if we take the water and we sprinkle it over a person or a baby's head. It doesn't matter if we totally immerse the person under water. It's just so long as water is applied to that person and we use the words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So the two things that are necessary to have a Christian baptism are water and God's name. As defined in Matthew 28, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So now we have to see if there is proof from Scripture that when someone is baptized, they receive the blessings that we noted according to our definition. So let's start with Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the first blessing that Scripture tells us happens through baptism, is we receive the forgiveness of sins. Second thing that scripture tells us is in Titus 3.5. 
talking about God. God saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his great mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So when a person is baptized, they have rebirth to a new life. Remember, we have a word for that, that we connect with the Holy Spirit. We call that regeneration, that there is a second birth to a new life. And the third blessing that comes from baptism is in 1 Peter 3.21. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the third blessing that comes to us who have been baptized is salvation. So we see that baptism certainly fulfills the definition of a sacrament. It is something that Jesus commanded. Jesus started this when he said we were put to baptize, to apply water. That's the earthly element in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the Word of God. And it offers and gives to us real blessings, the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Those things come to everyone who is baptized. And anyone can do a baptism. God does not place any restrictions on who can baptize. Because the baptism doesn't depend on the faith of the person. It doesn't de depend on the person who's doing it. It depends only on two things. Water and God's word. And when the water is applied in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, it is a true, valid baptism. Now, we're going to look at who should be baptized. That's an interesting, it's an interesting question for us. Who, for whom is baptism intended? Well, we go back to Jesus' words. Jesus' words in Matthew 28, verse 19. He says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. So, Jesus said to make disciples of all nations. And the reason that he said that is because all people have a need for baptism. If we go down to John 3, 5, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. So every person needs to be born again. Needs to have a rebirth. A rebirth through baptism. That's the water and the Spirit. The second need that every person has, we find in Galatians 3, 26 and 27. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. So all people have a need to become God's children. That we were born enemies of God, but God through faith makes us his holy children. And that comes through baptism. The third need that every person has, we've had this passage before from Acts 2, 38 and 39. Peter came to that um, to the people that were there, and he said to them that they needed to be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. That was important to them. And he also included then these words, the promise is for you and your children and for all who far are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So all people 
need the forgiveness of sins. That's why we are told to baptize all nations. And included in all nations are children. That's what Peter says here. The promise is for you and your children. Jesus himself talked about the importance of a child's faith when he was rebuking the disciples who didn't want the parents who were there to allow their children to come to Jesus. They thought that that was annoying Jesus and being a problem. But Jesus said to them, if anyone causes one of these little ones, these who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned into the depths of the sea. And included in that group were babies. So, Jesus himself says, yes, babies are a part of all nations. They too need to be born again by water and the Spirit to become God's children, not just children of this world. They need the forgiveness of sins, and the point is that the Holy Spirit can bring them to believe in Jesus. Faith can be and is created even in infants. It doesn't rely on the power of the person. It relies on the power of God. God's word that is used with the water creates faith in the individual, no matter how old or how young. But it is important for us to remember that as we've talked and discussed things uh, over the last two days, the case with uh, the Paul and Silas and the jailer of Philippi, he wanted to be baptized. He wanted to know what was going on, and they instructed him in the word. Then they baptized him. Also, with Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, he talked to him about Isaiah. Then he baptized him. So we see the importance of when we use the means of grace, there is a difference in how we react and how we go about baptizing and teaching between adults and between infants. With adults, we instruct them first. We teach them like Paul and Silas did the jailer, like Philip did the Ethiopian eunuch. We teach them what God is, what Jesus has done, what baptism is mean, what baptism means, and then we baptize them. With infants, we flip that around because in Jesus' command, he said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So, with babies, we baptize them, and then we continue to teach them. We continue to instruct them. And that's important. It's important that families realize their responsibility to their children. Moms and dads are to feed their baby souls and their faith just like they feed their bodies so that they can grow strong and remain faithful to God. So baptism really is such a simple thing. It's just applying water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But it has such great impact. It does such tremendous things that couldn't be done in the person's life without baptism. It causes them to be born again. So they have the forgiveness of sins that they are eternally saved by the power of God's word. And that's why we baptize all nations. That's why we teach all nations. That's why we carry out Jesus' command. We do that willingly because we're very grateful and thankful that someone in the past came to us to teach us, to share with us this great message that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. 
And through baptism, faith is created to trust him, to believe him, to know him as our personal Lord and personal Savior. So I thank you for your time today, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, there is a worksheet assignment for you to do today. So please make sure you get on that and you don't forget about it. Because, remember, Pastor said we're tightening up on these things. You need to do your daily work. You need to get them done before the deadline. Those worksheets. Because it's important. Because all your grades count today. All your grades count this quarter and this school year. Nobody gets to slide by this year. You get exactly the grade for the work that you have done. So keep on it, stick with it, and get it done. Get it done today. And I hope that you have a great and enjoyable day. See you later.